Boker Tov, good morning. Shabbat Shalom. The sun is shining and we're doing well. We're alive and we have another opportunity this morning to share about Father's Word and how good that He is. You know, a few weeks ago I I did a a message on transition and you know this kind of came back to me this morning we're going through a bible reading plan and currently we're in we're in numbers and um i'm a, i'm a couple of days behind but the, it's okay um all in his timing reading through numbers 9 this morning this kind of just um really kind of grabbed a hold of me as I want to piggyback, you know, sort of tie on to the transition message. And this morning I'm reading in Numbers 9 and verse 15. And on the day that the dwelling place was raised up, the cloud covered the dwelling place, the tent of the witness. From evening until morning it was above the dwelling place like the appearance of fire. Thus it was continually. The cloud covered it by day in the appearance of fire by night. And whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tent, after that the children of Israel would depart. And in the place where the cloud dwelt, there the children of Israel would camp. At the mouth of Yahuwah, the children of Israel departed. And at the command of Yahuwah, they camped. They remained camped as long as the cloud dwelt above the dwelling place. Even when the cloud lingered many days above the dwelling place, the children of Israel guarded the charge of Yahuwah and did not depart. And so it was when the cloud was above the dwelling place a few days. According to the mouth of Yahuwah, they camped. And according to the mouth of Yahuwah, they would depart. Verse 21. And so it was. When the cloud dwelt only from evening until morning, when the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they departed. Wherever or whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud was taken up, they departed. Whether two days or a new moon or a year, that the cloud lingered above the dwelling place to dwell upon it, the children of Israel camped and did not depart. But when it was taken up, they departed. Verse 23. At the mouth of Yahuwah they camped, and at the mouth of Yahuwah they departed. They guarded the charge of Yahuwah at the mouth of Yahuwah by the hand of Moshe. And I share that this morning because, you know, it's it's just, you know, you think about it. Here's this, you know, this cloud that that dwelt there above the dwelling place, and they knew that as long as the presence of Yahuwah was there among them, that they were safe, they rested. But when the cloud lifted, they knew it was time to go. And so it kind of reminded me of the uh, time in, in Costa Rica when, as I said in my last a message on transition about you know this this is just another pasture that he has led his sheep to that we are being led to and so we're grazing along we're eating you know enjoying ourselves and then we look up because we hear his voice oh it's time to leave it's time to go to another pasture and it sounds so simple but did he really make following him difficult? Well, I say uh, yes and no, because really, he said, um, if you're going to follow me, you're going to need to take up your stake and you're going to and, and follow me. It's going to be a hard road. But when you take up your stake with the idea that it's not you bearing that, it's what he's already borne upon himself and that your flesh is dead then you simply, oh, let's follow him because he's getting ready to leave. Let's pack things up. The cloud is lifting. 
it, that must mean that he's time he's wanting us to go. And so, you know, I come to you this morning in, in kind of a uh, attitude of simplicity. And I wanted to share something with you. Um, this is from the Adam Clark um, commentary. And I'll just read this uh, quickly. That he's talking about. Um, let's see here. Moses, uh, let's see, uh, Elohim chose to keep this people so dependent upon himself and so submissive to the decisions of his own will that he would not even give them regular times of marching or resting. They were to both, they were to do both when and where Elohim saw best. Thus, they were ever kept ready for their march though perfectly ignorant of the time when they should commence it. But this was all well. They had the presence of Elohim with them. The cloud by day and the fire by night demonstrates that Elohim was amongst them. You know, I I, I read that. And sometimes, you know, I go check out to see what these these guys have to say about it. You know, and um, Adam Clark's pretty, pretty good commentary, but... It just it just resonated within me if you think about it, and, and you know I'm I'm kind of just talking out myself because Rebecca and I are still kind of right in the middle of a of a move of a transition, and it's it's been um, it's been difficult at times you know um, because we want to figure it all out, and. You know, we are, we are following him and where he wants us to go. We believe that. We trust in that fact. I mean, that's just, this is how we pray that he's leading us because we have guarded his charge. Therefore, like Abraham's servant, he's leading us in the way. But when you, you know, sometimes, how should, how can I say this? Um, we are so focused on when we are leaving and when we are returning we are so focused on the journey that whether we leave this place that we seem like it's comfortable or whether we rest in a place where it feels like uh, this is like chaos right now. Um, and sometimes he does bring us to that um, to keep us dependent upon him and really to show us something. Sometimes we may not always rest in the place um, that seems like it's convenient and, and for our flesh. In other words, it's like, okay, why are we pausing here? These are called the seasons that we go through, the, the wilderness times that we go through. And But there's some times that he brings us to rest, um, that you know, our greatest rest is when we get up and leave the place of the wilderness. That means we're changing seasons. So what I'm trying to say here, whether we're moving forward or whether we're resting in a place, whether he has us, we are still being led us. We are still being led by him. And the greatest thing to remember in all of this is is to lose our focus on where we are going uh, because he's leading us and remember that his presence is with us because that's the key. Whether we are moving, whether we are staying, whether he's calling us to another pasture or whether he has us dwelling here a day, a month, or a year, as it says in the scriptures. The point of the matter is that he's leading us. His presence is with us. And so, you know, we find that all throughout the scriptures that are the three Hebrew um, men or, or young men that were in the fiery furnace. Um, that was a place that they stayed for a little while. And though it seemed like the world around them uh, was looking upon them, like how how is this even possible that you're in the midst of a fiery trial? Yet the presence of the Messiah was with them and they came out of it. I think that sometimes we lose focus 
of his presence, whether we are in a place that feels comfortable to us or whether we're in a place that doesn't feel comfortable. The point of the matter is, is his presence is with us and we have to trust. If we trust him that he is our, our savior and that he is leading us, he is our great shepherd, then we have to believe that through the transitions, where they start and where they end and everything in between, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. His presence is with us. And as long as we guard his charge, as it says in the scriptures, as long as we guard his charge, he's going to lead us by his will where he deems best for us. And so this is my charge to you and to myself that we have got to rest in the fact that he knows what he's doing. Um, he is perfectly trustworthy. He is perfectly good. He's created only things that are good. He's made things good for us. He knows what's best for us. And so, yes, disappointments come. Disappointments will go. But his word is forever. And it may not be, you know, the kind of pasture that we, you know, that you might expect. But in the end, where he has you is where he has you. And what are we learning? What are we gathering from those times of resting? What are, when it's time to go, is there an excitement? Is there a, okay, where are you taking me now, Father? Versus we are creatures of comfort that we like to rest, we like to stay, we like our routines. But in our routines, sometimes we lose focus and we lose that I need you, Father, I need you, shepherd of my soul, more than anything else. We lose that cry because we get to the point where he's talking about lest you forget so in our transitions, lest we forget who he is, what he has done, what he has brought us out of. And there are every need, our every cry of our heart, everything that we have, everything that we possess, all, all belongs to him. We just are like um, blowing like the wind, as it says in John 3. And you know... This is what it's about. It's about being led by his spirit. When we're guarding his charge, when it's time for him to move, we move with him. When it's time for him to rest, we move, we rest with him. The point of the matter is the enemy wants us to get so focused on the, or even our flesh. You know, I won't even give the enemy this credit, but even our flesh just likes to have that comfort and, and routine and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong feeling like you're home. But we are on a journey back home again. And we're not home until death is put under his feet. Because home to father means he's got his family with him. And there's no more dying. There's no more mourning. There's no more any of that. So my my rambling here is basically... Be led by the Spirit. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Realize that His presence is with us. Wherever we go, as long as we are following Him, as and when He says go, we go. When He says return to your rest, return to our rest. It's time to rest because He wants us to know that, hey, I am going to do everything that I can do to make you dependent upon me. And I'm not talking about him making us sick or putting cancer or anything on us to make people depend. But you know, the scriptures talk about him using even the things that the, that the enemy does, the things that the, dim, the, that the devil plague, he will use them. He will extract good even out of death. He will extract good. And that's what he did with Messiah. He extracted Messiah up from the dead. And we praise his name this morning. Go forth. Enjoy your transition because it's uncomfortable, yes, to our flesh. 
but it should bring great nourishment to our spirit because he is leading us and his presence goes with us. Amen. Shalom, shalom.